You say that out of the negative comes the positive. How does one negate the I without aggression, sub- suppression, or denial, or without conflict? Who is that which does the negating? Can you go into this problem? You say that out of the negative comes the positive. How does one negate the I without suppression or denial and without conflict? Who is it that which denies, which does the negating? Can you go into this problem? You are going to go into this problem. The speaker. What is positive action and what is negative action? The positive action is, I must do that, I will do that, this is right, this is wrong. Or what is considered positive, following certain course, idealistic course, which will eventually bring about a different world, and so on. The positive action, positive thinking, as the evangelists and others propagate, positive thinking. And what is negative thinking? To think of others badly? to, I don't know what negative thinking is, really. Thinking in itself is negative, but this matter we're going through. <laughs> so, the questioner wants to know whether the self, the essence of selfishness, the self-centered activity, can be denied without suppression, without conflict, without any form of evasion? That is the question. We are not saying that you must negate the I. How can you negate the I? And who is it, as the questioner says, who negates or asserts when you say, I am? Who is it that says, I am, aggressively? And who is it that says, I am not? Both the positive and the negative, who is it? Go on, sir. Is there a separate consciousness, a separate state of mind, a separate clarity in our consciousness? You follow what my question? Is there some element? of clarity in this messy consciousness, messy, conflicting, aggressive, fear, conscious, there are fears, faith, beliefs, superstitions, and all that, in that confusion, which is our consciousness, is there a spot of clarity? which then can say, I will direct, I won't suppress, I will change this whole confusion. You understand my question? Is there? Please ask. 
if one is terribly honest with oneself, doesn't want to deceive oneself, or accept some comforting idea, or merely follow some tradition, then you will say there is a field in this messy consciousness that is clear, unconfused, and that will bring about clarity in the whole field of confusion. You understand my question? This is your very old story that there is, according to the Hindus and the Asiatic world, a certain entity apart from all this. They call it Atman, God, or what you like, who is witnessing all this and seeing all this through various forms of assertions, conflicts and so on, will ultimately free the mind from the confusion. Right? And probably here too, in the Western world, there is this idea of permanent soul, whatever that may mean, who is gradually asserting himself and will ultimately go to heaven. Right? These are all very comforting, utilitarian theories. But they have not so far cleared man's confusion, man's conflict, his agonies, his loneliness, his depression, and so on. So, why not try, when you're all so practical in the West, and the East is also trying to copy you by becoming very practical, why not why not see that this is so utterly impractical? The God within you, or the soul within you, or the clarity within you, which will wipe away this confusion so easily. If that is not practical, as it is not apparently, because one has not it has not succeeded, succeeded in the sense please let's be clear in the usage of that word, succeeded not to be something in this world, to have more money and so on, succeeded in cla- in bringing about complete comprehension, the ending of conflict and so on. As it is not, let's look at it differently. That means one must deny this, negate this. That's going against all your religious tradition. The the Bible, the soul, you understand what I'm saying? Negating all that, then if you do, then we can look at it differently. But if you have slight attachment to all that, conscious or unconscious, then you will not look for anything else. So, first of all, what is the Self, the I?
all the attributes, all the tendencies, the various forms of idiosyncrasies, various beliefs, the various hurts, the conflict in relationship, fear, loneliness, agony, seeking some elusive security, suffering, all that, the name, the form, is the you. Right? Or do you doubt that? If you doubt it, one should, then when you doubt something, you, it means you must examine, not just doubt. If you doubt that there is God, doubt. I am not saying you should. If, there is, if you doubt it, then you must inquire if there is such a thing. But merely to doubt, say, so, well, there is no meaning. Skepticism has great value. But if you are merely skeptic all the time, it was the point, like being. Illusory, caught in an illusion, they're both the same. So, where there is doubt, there is also the movement of inquiry. So we are inquiring together. This I, this separatist activity, so-called individual, which is the essence of the I. And the questioner wants to know how to negate that. The very whole activity of me, my possessions, my qualities, my aggression, my if the whole of that, how is it? want to negate it. Now, the question asks that, how to negate it? Then he goes on to ask, who is it that negates? You follow? First he said, tell me how to negate it. Then he says, who is it that negates? You follow? I want you to understand this. So, we are not negating it. We are trying to find out what it has done in the world first, this self-centered, egotistic activity, what it has done in the world, and see the reality of it, the actuality of it. And then inquire, who is it that is acting all the time from the centre? You understand my question? It's not that we are negating the self, but that this the activity of the self in the world, what it has done in the world, what is has done in the family, in the group, in the community, in this nation, in the world, and so on, and seeing the reality of it, not the idea, the an idea of what it had done in the world, but the actual happening, the actual activity of it, and from there, which is our criterion criteria, from there inquire if that Self, which is creating such mischief in the world, can that Self be looked at? You follow? Then we will inquire, what is it that is looking at the Self? 
It's the same question put differently. So, first, what has it done in the world? I don't have answered that question, obviously. It has separated itself into nations, into communities, into various forms of social divisions. It has divided itself from the rest of the community society world as the family, and from the family, the me, my aggression, my happiness, my pursuit, and so on, so on, so on. It has brought about division in the world, because it has it said, in that division, as my particular belief, my particular religion, my particular faith, in that faith, in that belief, in that dogma, I will be secure, I will be safe. Right? Are you following all this? So, it has created vast division, incredible divisions. And so, where there is division, there must be conflict. So the I, which is the creator of this division, which is the essence of conflict, right? Can that I come to an end? Not suppressing, not evading, not avoiding, and so on, so on. Can that I, which has done all this mischief, all these terrible things in the world, separate gods, It is the. It has brought about a million wars, thousands of wars. Is that a fact? For you, not for me. Is that a fact? Or is it an exaggeration? Or is it some kind of concept? And you are adjusting yourself to that concept. That is, we think war is cruel, and therefore the I must be. You follow? First conceive an idea, and then adjust ourselves to that idea. We are saying, observe what is happening in the world without bias, without any partiality. And you see what the I, the so-called individual expansion, the individual aggression, the individual success, and so on and so on, what it has done in the world. If you are very clear on that point, then we say now, Seeing the what cruelties, bestiality is brought about in the world, can this movement, which is the uh, which is the me, can this movement ever stop or radically change? When you have put that question to yourself, then. Who is it that is to bring about a change? The questioner says that. Who is it that will end this self centered activity? Right? That's the question, or the questioner is saying. That is, we have to go much deeper into that, which is. Is there a difference from the observer
and the thing he observes. Please just listen to it. Don't agree or disagree or say, oh, you're repeating your old stuff. I've heard this last year or two years ago or twenty years ago. You are repeating. Move out of that rut. We'll move out of that rut. It is not a rut, but you may call it a rut. When you observe a tree, that thing, can you look at it without the word first? Or when you look at it, the instant response is, that's a tree, oak tree, whatever it is. Can you look at it without the word? Word being the symbol, the idea, the memory which says, which uses the word as the tree. You follow? Experiment for a minute, for a second or two, to look at those th- that thing which is around you now. And when you so look without the word, which is because word, we are caught in a network of words. I don't know if if one realizes that. The word has. The symbol has taken the place of reality. When you say, my wife, you have the complete picture of my husband, or my son, my country, the flag. And when you use the word communist, it is, you follow, the whole Intonation, the quality, the what is behind that word, and when you say I'm an American, or I believe in God, I don't believe in God. You follow? It's a vast network of words in which the mind lives, the brain lives. I don't know if you have noticed all this. I hope it interests you. The question I asked it. When the speaker is, if you are not interested, it's a nice day. <coughs> Does one realize that? That one can never look at a thing, a living thing, or a dead thing, or a thing that is moved. Always with the world. To look at a river, at the flowing water, not call it a Mississippi or Thames or the Ganges, just to or the Nile, just look at the moving water. It has quite a different quality. Now. So can you observe, is there an observe, not you observe, sorry, can you, is there an observation of the movement of the self, which is anger, bitterness, hurt, just to look at all that without the world? Are you following all this? Is, can you? The word is the past, right? The word I- indicates the content of the past. My wife, I'm taking ordinary example, my wife. The, when you use my wife, 
see the content of that work, the enormous implication of various incidents, accidents, ideas, hurt, all that in the past, right? And that word, my wife, indicates the tremendous content of the past. But can you look at the woman or the man without the past to look at her? Go on, sit. Do it. Don't listen to it. It's no, it's no point in listening to it if you're not applying, if you're not doing it. So, we are, first of all, we are asking. Is there an observation of the whole movement of the self, which we have described both outwardly and inwardly? Can you look at that? No. Is there an observation of that without the past? You get it? Do you understand what I'm talking about? Look, I'm, I've lived 80 years or more. 87 years. A man who has lived 80, 87 years has collected lots of experience, lots of ideas, met lots of people. There are all these past memories throbbing away. And either he's an idiot to live in the past, or memory with this person being very, 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 very selective, and not live in the past, but watch things are happening, to observe without the observer, which is the past. I've got have I making clear to observe to observe one's reactions without naming it as jealousy, as anger, just to observe. When you so observe, what happens? Go into yourself. I hope you are doing this, not just listening or getting bored with the damn stuff. If you are listening, we are asking a question, which is, when there is an observation without direction, without motive, which is the past, what happens? Now, to find out what happens, actually, you must inquire what takes place when you are directing it, when you are remembering it, your reactions, or giving direction to your reactions, That is, there is a separation between the observer and the observed. Then there is a division and hence a conflict. I must not do this, I must do that. This is right, this is wrong. I I say this is right according to my motive. And so on, so on, so on. So when I see when there is an observation that where there is division, there must inevitably be conflict, outwardly and in psychologically. That is absolute fact. When I call myself British or an American, and I am willing to follow the whole thing, you have right in front of you. You are willing to destroy thousands of people, spend enormous sums of money to do something which 
your national pride or some nonsense dictates. So, can this conflict in the human mind, which is your mind, it's not my mind, human mind, which is which is in constant travail, constant conflict. We are inquiring if whether that conflict can end. It can end only completely when the observer is not, only observation is. Is the thinker different from thought? Think, look at it. Is the thinker right different from the thought which he has created? The thinker says, "I'm a Catholic, Protestant, Hindu. I'm a Democrat, totality, whatever it is." Thinker says that, hmm? but the thinker has created the right, the Democrat. The Republican, the left, far left, far right, far centre, and so on. The thinker has done that. And is the thinker different from his thoughts? Oh, come on, so this is so simple. Obviously not. But we have divided it. Right? So look at another question. Is the experiencer different from experience? Ah, this is now you. I'm glad. Now you're caught. <laughs> we all want experiences. Going to the moon, experience of God, experience of a dozen kinds of sex, experience of uh, going to the Himalayas and climbing the Everest. You follow experiences. Now we're asking, is the experiencer different from his experience? Experiencer must recognize the experience, right? Right? Otherwise, it's not an experience. You follow all this? Am I talking some strange language? I experience what? a motor accident. I experience in a car, an accident in a car, and that's recorded as pleasant, unpleasant, as hurt, and so on. The expense of it and so on. That's recorded, right? The experience of that thing is remembered. And the, that experience is a memory which is different from that which has happened uh, last year, right? So, the observer is that experience of last year, right? Oh, come on, sir. And that experience uh, either wants to avoid future incidents of that kind, or if he is prone to accidents, he is inviting them. We are asking, is the experiencer different from the experience? Of course not. I've invented God, and I'm going to experience that marvelous state, right? I have visions of, if you are a Christian Virgin Mary, if I was a Buddhist, I have an experience of various types of Buddhist consciousness, 
or if I'm a Hindu, I have, you follow? Being conditioned to a particular tradition, which is the past, I experience that. Now oh, come on, sir. I have projected that and I experience that. So, the experiencer is the experience. And if there is no experience, what is the state of mind? Do you understand all these questions? We are all wanting experiences. And when one actually goes into it very, very deeply, Experience, we hope, will and will bring about more knowledge, more clarity, more this and more that. But the experiencer is the experience. Therefore, the mind is no longer seeking any experience. Only such a mind is absolutely clear. It requires no challenge. Oh, that's a different point. So, is there pure observation of the movement of the self? Because they are in that, the self is not different from the observer. There is only observation, without the past accumulated memories interfering with observation. When the past, when the past memories and accumulated knowledge interfere, then there is wastage of energy. I don't know if you are following all this. Wastage of energy in conflict, in denying, in suppressing, in arguing of why should I rationalizing the whole business, which is a form of conflict. Now, that's a wastage of energy. Whereas when there is observation without the past, there is the all energy is brought into being, all energy comes in that observation, which dispels that which is observed. It's up to you. I've said it ten different ways. So there is no conflict with the Self, or denial of the Self, or suppression of the Self. It is the clarity of observation which is the greatest form of intelligence. 